What's up everybody, VHE Tutor here, and today I'm going to show you how to create an alien teleporting into your map after you walk through a trigger to surprise the player and have them take on an alien fight unbeknownst to them. So, it's not too tricky, um, there's a few entities that we got to use and set up, but um, once we do that, um, you can kind of copy and paste and just rename and use it throughout your map. And um, there's a couple ways to do this. One of them is using a monster maker. And the other way is to use a scripted sequence to um, kind of basically move the monster from one end of the map to the other. And the advantage of that is um, you can uh, create the monster beforehand, give it a name. Um, if you want to trigger something when it dies, you can do that. Otherwise, if you just want a random monster to spawn in, you can do a monster maker and it'll do the same exact thing. So let's get started. Um, when the player rounds this corner, we're going to have them, um, uh, we're going to have the monster appear right around this area. So I'm going to start by getting my trigger. I'm going to create a trigger here. Okay. And we'll control T and we'll do trigger once and then we'll target, um, te we'll call it teleport sequence one, tele one for short, the score MM. Um, that's that. And then there's a few set of entities here. We have two sprites, one NV beam, one NV shake, two ambient generics in your monster maker and or scripted sequence. So let's get started. I'm going to do the sprites. Now I'll do the sprites last. So first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to do the NV beam. That one's going to be the most intensive because um, it's got the most settings, but um, it's not really hard. I've, I'll put the uh, settings in the description. So we're going to open up the beam here. Um, we're going to call it Tele1 underscore beam underscore chaos. I kind of copied this from the blue shift files. Um, and this is what they use. So I'm just going to go through um, the only things we need to change. So, oops, excuse me, I just clicked into the other window. So what we need to change first is, of course, we did the name. Then we're going to go ending entity or start entity. I mean, we don't need an ending. Um, this is going to be the same name as the entity itself so the beams are going to start on this entity and kind of branch out from there so then we're going to go render fx um, that's going to be normal but we want the brightness to be 150. we're going to change the beam color for red green blue we're going to change the middle which is green to 255 that's going to make it green because we're going to do an alien slave um, radius 200 uh, life 0.5 and we're going to do width of beam. We're going to put it at 18. Um, amount of noise, 65. And sprite name. We're going to change this um, laser beam to LGTN light and then ning.spr. Perfect. And then the only other thing we need to change. I mean, this is at 35, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't get used. Um, strike again time. We're going to go negative 0.5. And these things can just be made normal. So then we have our beam. Um, let's create our NV shake. This doesn't have to be in the um, stack. And what I mean stack is we're going to have a couple entities piled on top of each other, excuse me, in the center area. So, but the NV shake can be right off to the side. So we're going to call, we're going to double click it. We're going to call this Tele1 uh, shake. I'm going to go amplitude. We're going to leave that at default. Effect radius. We'll bump it up just a little bit to 1000. Duration. We're going to change that to 2. And then um, this jerk rumble thing. We're going to put this to 100. So that can sit there. Um, and of course, let's. why don't we create our multi-manager. Boom. Get up out of the floor. Put it above the shake. Um, and we'll give this a name. Tilly 1MM. And we'll go through that in a little bit. And then we'll do our ambient generics. So we will we'll place it right above this one. 
So we'll, um, oh, and the flags for the NV beam, excuse me. Um, we're going to go toggle and end sparks. And then NV shake doesn't have any flags. And then in the ambient generic, we are going to um, set up telly one underscore, oops, telly one underscore sound one. Wave name is going to be um, debris slash beam start two dot wave volume 10 and then for the flags we go medium radius start silent and not toggled and so i'm going to hold shift click and drag create another one let go i'm going to go into this one we're just going to change this to beam start seven we're going to change the name to sound two and that's all we need to do for those so now let me get my sprite in there we'll go nv sprite we'll, we'll create it and then we'll move it into place so this one is going to be um, the first sprite, it's kind of like a gas effect, so we're going to call it Tele1 underscore sprite 1. Render FX constant glow. Render mode is glow. FX amount, we're going to go 2 by 5. And for this color, we're going to go 77, 210, 130. Um, frame rate is good. Sprite name, we're going to change this to F E X P L O 1. Dot SPR F explo one dot SPR scales as it is, and then we can move this into place, put it right over here, and put it up. Okay, drag it down a little bit, and then I'm going to hold shift, create another one off to the side, just so that way we can differentiate. And this one's going to be sprite two, and then um, we're going to change the FX color. We're going to go 184, 250, 214. Sprite name is going to be uh, X Flare Flare one dot SPR. And then we will move this into place. Okay, perfect. And then we will create our monster maker. Yeah, right here. All right there real quick. And then we'll move it into place after. So this... Um, we'll call this option A. The other way is the um, scripted sequence, and I will also um, show you how to do that. Um, we're going to call this Kelly1 underscore spawner. And then monster type is monster alien slave. Um, number of monsters 1, frequency 1, and max live children 1, because we only want 1 to spawn. Um, we don't need anything in the flags. So that is it for that. So we can move this into place because this is actually going to spawn the monster put it up a little bit to kind of match the area of the sprites so let me bring up my picture for the multi-manager so okay now we have we'll uh do the multi-manager so we make sure it is triggering telly one underscore mm so we'll go in here we'll do the smart edit and this key will go telly one beam underscore chaos chaos and we'll start it immediately we'll add that oh shoot okay telly one beam underscore chaos tab start that there and we'll do we'll copy that and then beam chaos number one and we'll change this to value to one so that way it um targets it again which ends up turning it off so then we'll do telly one shake We'll change that to zero. We're going to start that right away. Let me just make sure that is. Yep, Telly one shake. Okay. And then we'll add a new one. We'll go Telly one sound one. This is going to be the first sound that plays. Um, make that zero. And then, oops, sorry. Telly one underscore sound two. We'll start that at 0.5. And then, well, you know what? Why don't we listen to him real quick? He's going to be loud. Um, so here's the first one. That sound one. Then you then you kind of time it in the multi manager, and it creates a and then whatever makes the sound. So then we'll add the spawner telly one underscore spawner. And we'll put that to a value of 0.6. I'm gonna copy it, and then we'll add it again telly spawner number one. We'll make that 0.7 so we can stop because we have to stop the spawner. Otherwise, the monster is going to um, not react to seeing the player for a couple seconds and we want it to react to the player immediately so we need to stop it so that's 0.7 so then we'll do telly1 sprite1 
with a value of zero. We're going to start both the sprites at the same time. Copy that. Make it sprite two. Add the zero. And then I think that's it. All right. I know that was really fast, but all that is is just creating some entities, putting them in the place and putting the settings on. So um, when we cross this line, a alien slave should teleport. So I'm going to compile it. Oh, I messed something up. What did we do? What happened? I'm going to be being down just a little bit so that way I can access the monster maker. Um, all right, again. Oh, you know what? I bet I ran into it. Why don't we move the trigger back a little bit? Because it seems like the player has the ability to um, interrupt the sequence. Try that. And the next thing we could do, what, what I saw Blue Shift do, is add a trigger hurt around the teleport. So that way you get spawn killed if you go past it. But if you place it far enough, it will not, um, the player can't. I mean, I guess if they're bee hopping, they can. But that works decently, though. And then we'll see what happens if we, um, uh, if we make it a, uh, uh, scripted sequence. So, what we're going to do, I'm just going to take a random texture, and I'm going to make a 128 by 128 in an opposite end of the map. So, let's bring that grid up a little bit. 128 by 128. We'll go down, we'll go up, and then we will do the hollow. We'll hollow this out, because all we need is it to be a room. And then I'm going to put our monster alien slave inside it. We're going to give it a name. We'll gag it. Although I don't think the gag really works because I still hear him make noise. But we'll call him slave. Okay. And then we'll go back. And then we'll drag this monster. We'll call it. We'll put an X at the end of it so that way it doesn't get called. But we'll keep it in the map just for funsies. We'll move it out here. We'll bring the grid down a little bit. Let me go get my scripted sequence. I'll place that real quick. Then I'm going to call it Tilly one for spawner. Keep it the same name. Target monster is going to be slave because that's our monster. And we'll move to position instantaneous. And then we'll do no interruptions and override AI. I know I'm going kind of quick, but it's, there ain't nothing to it. Um, so we'll compile it. Oh, one thing actually I forgot to do is change the orientation of the uh, scripted sequence, but we don't actually need to because it is pointing the correct direction. So let's go in. There's our monster. And the only thing that's different is that when you use the monster maker, um, the alien kind of floats in the air and then drops, which I think is a cool effect. Whereas if you use the scripted sequence, it doesn't drop the alien. Because um, if you lift the if you lift the secret, uh, scripted sequence up into the air, the monster will stay in the air until it decides to move, which is not flattering. So um, we don't want that. So why don't we do something like this? So we'll call this glass, um, and we'll make it only trigger. So what I'm going to do here is show you the benefits of doing a scripted sequence where this, if this alien slave dies, say, um, death, we'll target the glass, and this glass is only breakable through a trigger, so, um, we just made it so that if that alien slave dies, the glass breaks, and pretend that's the only way to progress past the part of the level, so... I'll show you that. I'll skip the um, 
See? This ain't gonna break. It's unbreakable. But if we go through here, and this guy dies, glass breaks. Which is a, is a cool use. There's a lot of things you can do with that. So, um... Those are the two ways to do it, either Monster Maker or Scripted Sequence. Like I said, if you're just going for just some monsters that mean nothing, I would say use the Monster Maker because it has that cool, like, drop-in effect. But if you want to go a little bit more advanced and add some flair to your map so that way the monster uh, depends on something, like progressing forward, then I would use the Scripted Sequence. So that is it for you today. I know I didn't really speak about what this map is that I have here. It was, um, if you look at the name, it's called Mega Tutorial. It was supposed to be um, where I kind of build a map with the audience and uh, kind of just go through everything that we're doing, sort of like glass and rounded walls or whatever. But never really got around to it, but I figured I would use it for this scenario. Maybe we'll build off from this point and then um, we'll have like a cool map that we've all worked on together. But... Uh, thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting. Um, I do read all the comments and I enjoy when people comment. You know, it's nice to see that people are enjoying what I have uh, put out for you guys. And um, until next time.